One by one, animal rescue workers in Adams County showed us a parade of dogs that may have been stolen. Well, our deputies took a report of a missing or lost or stolen canine. And during the investigation on that missing canine, we got some more information that led us to a location in Adams County where several canines were recovered, including the stolen canine. In all, Deputy Sheriff Randy Walters says investigators discovered 17 dogs in this trailer off Jones Road in Peebles. Through that investigation, two people were arrested for the theft of the dog. Olivia Yost and Molly Salzer have been charged with theft and tampering with evidence. Deputies now want anyone with a missing dog to study the screen. If you think one of these dogs belongs to you, call the Adams County Sheriff's Department. Look at these animals if they're familiar to you. Contact us, let us know. We're not saying that they are. But through our investigation, this could range into the Cincinnati area and the Middletown area. So we're just trying to get a loved pet back to an owner if that's the case. Now, this case is in its very early stages. Deputies do say if more than one dog was stolen by the two women who have now been charged in the case, they'll work to figure out why that was the case. And they'll also try to see if any of the dogs may have faced the prospect of being sold for profit. Reporting live tonight in Adams County, Todd Dykes, WWT News 5. All right, Todd, thank you. So if you want to take maybe another look at the dogs found, go to the Adams County Sheriff's Department's Facebook page and you can take a second look. All right, new in tonight in Mason, a woman out jogging this morning says she was attacked from behind. This all happened along Hickory Woods Drive just before about seven o'clock this morning. The woman says she was able to fight the man off and then was able to get away and run to a safe location. So far, officers have not been able to find that man responsible. A decorated war veteran and his daughter killed in a crime that has stunned the community of Aurora, Indiana. Today, people closest to that veteran are trying to make sense of the crime and the loss. WLWT News 5's Brian Hamrick has the interview you'll see only on WLWT. He served his country for 20 years as a Green Beret, but what happened here was worse than anything that happened to him during combat. Walter Bryant had survived two tours of Vietnam. He had three bronze stars with V for Valor. Valor. He had two purple hearts. But he couldn't survive whatever happened inside his own home Friday. This is where Walter, 78, and his daughter, Faith Craig, 58, were found dead. We just can't believe it. Uh, a guy that is uh, a true American hero and a true American patriot could die a violent death like that. P.G. Gentrop was a close friend of Walter's and was involved in several veterans organizations with him. It's just a tragedy. It's a tragedy. Walt would give you the shirt off of his back and uh, he literally would. He was that type of a man. Friends say Walter had lived at this Douglas Street address for decades. His wife died about a year ago and his daughter had moved in to live with him. Walter was active in honoring other veterans at the Aurora VFW. He's been here for a long, long time. Here, his name is on the board. As a lifetime member, those like Daniel Neff are stunned by what happened to him. It doesn't make sense. It's unbelievable. We, nobody can believe it, really. Police detained two people in connection with the homicide. One was questioned and released. The other was arrested on unrelated charges. We've learned the person arrested is a relative of the victims. It's not fair, especially for the reason that uh, Walt's not going to be with us anymore. It's just a, a tragedy. Now, even though they have a person of interest, no one has been charged in connection with the deaths. Brian Hemrick, WLWT News 5. Services for Walter Bryant will be Friday. The funeral Saturday. Services have not been set for Faith Craig. A GoFundMe page has been set up for her. Well, luckily the rain is starting to move out here. And after a mild day today, sorry, but winter is going to be back tomorrow. Chief Meteorologist Kevin Robinson has Cincinnati's most accurate forecast tonight. Hi, Kev. Hey, Sheree, it's been a soggy day, but even with all the rain, I think you're going to find very few complaints about temperatures in the 50s. And if you haven't been able to get outside and enjoy it because of the wet weather, I think this evening is going to be pretty nice across the area, at least for the most part. Notice the rain is moving out of here. The only leftover showers right now extending from up across parts of Clinton County near Wilmington over towards New Vienna and then back down to parts 
parts of Adams County, but at least for the next several hours, I think we're in a lull in terms of wet weather. Temperatures are in the 50s right now. All around the metro, folks are hovering close to between 55 and 60, and I don't expect temperatures to fall much once the sun goes down, so it's going to be a very spring-like evening. Breezy and mild with temperatures in the 50s through midnight, and yes, eventually, I think after dinner time, after 8 or 9 o'clock, we'll run the risk of seeing more showers. Tomorrow, though, those showers could be flurries and snow showers. We're back to winter. I'll talk about the cold spell coming for the first few days of this week. All right, Kevin, you're singing our tune. Thank you. Good news from Capitol Hill tonight. Lawmakers have reached a deal to end that government shutdown. A major step in the Senate, and it's now setting the stage for a House vote. But this funding is only good for three weeks. Blaine Alexander has the details now from Washington, D.C. Shut down day three. The Senate finally reaching a deal to fund the government for now. The A's are 81, the A's are 18. The breakthrough, a number of Democrats agreeing to vote yes after assurance from Majority Leader Mitch McConnell that immigration will come to the floor. This immigration debate will have a level playing field at the outset and an amendment process that is fair to all sides. The debate now resetting a three week deal to keep the government open and reach an agreement on immigration. To all the dreamers who are watching today, don't give up. I know that you, your lives are hanging in the balance on what we do here on Capitol Hill and with the White House. The shutdown blame game playing on. The great deal making president sat on the sidelines. Democrats are the one that shut this discussion down by forcing a government shutdown, by being unwilling to fund the government. Caught in the middle, hundreds of thousands of federal employees who have spent days in limbo. It is unfair that the federal workers have to suffer because of the dysfunction that's going on on the Hill. In the end, few political points and no long-term fix. This funding deal is only good until February 8th. And the White House raising hopes on an immigration deal, saying on this issue, there is not much difference between President Trump and Democrats. Blaine Alexander, NBC News, Washington. Lady Liberty welcoming visitors despite the three day federal government shutdown. The Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island reopened today with New York's governor stepping in to fund the payroll. Andrew Cuomo says the state will pick up the $65,000 tab to pay federal workers today, keeping the lights on, the doors open, and the ferries full of tourists coming in. Well, the streetcar is back up and running after some serious mechanical problems last week. The Cincinnati Bell connectors started facing major problems on Wednesday that then spiraled into a full-on closure by Thursday. Metro buses covered the route the last few days. Then a power outage shut down the streetcar this morning around 9 o'clock in the morning, but it was back on track within 30 minutes. Right now, four of the five cars are running. The fifth car was hit by a car last Friday, a, a vehicle, I should say, causing damage to the body of the streetcar. Fast driving could be to blame here for a wild crash along Queen City Avenue. Police say the driver lost control and hit a pole, then continued into the parking lot of Queen City Pizza, hit several parked cars, and then the building. Police say the driver is 54-year-old Robert Banks. He was seriously hurt and had to be taken to the hospital. The crash closed Queen City Avenue overnight. Well, a 15-year-old student shot today in her high school cafeteria, a place called Italy, Texas, about 45 miles from Dallas. This shooting happened about 7.50 this morning. It's unclear how many students were in the cafeteria at the time. Police say the 16-year-old shooter left the building immediately after opening fire with a semi-automatic gun. He was quickly found and taken into custody. The girl flown to a hospital in Dallas. It's unclear the relationship between the two and the seriousness of the girl's injuries. By the way, Italy promotes itself as the biggest little town in Texas. It has about 2000 people living there and it's located between Dallas and Waco. Three top leaders at USA Gymnastics announcing their resignations today as more accusers testify against the former team doctor, Dr. Larry Nasser. The organization, as well as Michigan State University, where Nasser also worked, now accused of turning a blind eye to years and years of sex abuse. For a fifth day, an army of survivors spoke out at Nasser's sentencing. Nasser has pleaded guilty to multiple counts of child sex abuse. 15 year old Emma Ann Miller testified how she saw Nasser a week before he was suspended in 2016. I'm possibly the last child he will ever assault. My mom is still getting billed for appointments where I was sexually assaulted. 
the number of women stepping forward to share experiences of abuse at the hands of Dr. Larry Nasser, now growing to almost 150 women, including several Olympians. As part of this plea deal, all of his accusers are being allowed to give victim impact statements. Heading to the Olympics for a second time now, local skier Nick Gepper opens up about the rough road, though, he's had since Sochi. Yeah, this is a story we've never heard before. The extreme lows after the Olympic highs, his battle with depression and suicidal thoughts, and why his situation is actually more common among athletes than you might think. How about building a concert venue between the two stadiums downtown? Tonight at 5.30, new details on what it would look like and how big it would be. A Maryland police officer only one week on the job risks his life to save two teenagers who fell into an icy pond. So the only problem, he ended up being the one who needed rescued as well. So you can see the officer go out onto the icy surface there, but then he falls through. The 28-year-old officer manages to get out uh, with the help of one of those teenagers. Firefighters then had to use ropes and ladders to get the two teens out of the water. All three were taken to the hospital to be treated for hypothermia, but are going to be okay. You're watching Cincinnati's WLWT News 5.